Oh, hello, Mr. Bond. Would you like your usual? Of course. I would love a Heineken bottled, please. Coming right up. Wait. Not a martini? You know, shaken, not stirred? Well, no. Why would I want anything other than a cold, refreshing Heineken? Sometimes, lighter is better. Who are you even talking to? And was that their slogan? Jesus Christ, James, did you sell out? Well, these movies are expensive. What do you expect me to do? I expect you to die. Okay, jokes aside, how cool would it be to be an international secret agent? Fighting against forces of evil that the average person doesn't even know about? Living dangerously and getting put in high-stakes situations that only your quick wit and special skills can get you out of? Saving the world twice a week and looking great doing it? We've already done John Wick, so let's do James Bond on this License to Kill episode of Virtual Reviews. I Expect You to Die is a VR action puzzle game that came out towards the end of 2016. Wow, you remember when we thought that year sucked? Anyway, this game is available on a ton of different platforms like Steam VR, Oculus, Viveport, PlayStation VR, and even Windows Mixed Reality for you know, whoever has one of those. It puts you into the shoes, or I guess I should say the seat, of a classic Bond-like spy who is constantly getting into dire life-threatening scenarios. It's up to you to use your quick wit and telekinesis, which every spy has, to not only prevent your untimely demise, but also thwart the evil plans of your arch nemeses and save the world. Champagne and cigars are just a perk of the job. First off, let me just say that virtual reality is a great platform for interactive puzzle games like this. Sure, VR is great for shoot shoot bang action games, but there's a ton of potential for escape room-esque puzzle games like this one. I Expect You to Die really takes advantage of this. There's a good sense of discovery as you look around each level and figure out what items might be useful to you and what you're going to need for the puzzles that you're facing. The level design effectively blends nearby and far away objects to create depth in the environment while also conveying the stakes and the action while the player remains stationary in this seated VR experience. There's an interesting variety of small enclosed spaces and really wide open spaces in the levels so nothing feels recycled or conceptually repetitive. If you're having too much trouble, it's really good about kind of just nudging you in the right direction, but in my opinion, it's at the perfect balance of challenging enough to be rewarding and easy enough to not be frustrating. There's also plenty of tension to make the game exciting, forcing you to perform under pressure in many situations. And even once you've gone through all the levels, there's plenty of secrets, achievements, and collectibles, adding much needed replayability to this amazing but relatively short VR game. On the note of length though, they've already added two more levels since the game's release, and I think they're about to add a third. Heck, by the time this gets edited and finished, I might already be out, so keep an eye out for that. This game is absolutely overflowing with style and charm. I was infatuated the minute I sat through the intro sequence, which is basically just a Bond song intro sequence, but animated for VR. A few seconds into that, I already knew I had a gem on my hands. The style of the entire game is this cartoony homage to classic spy films like James Bond. Obviously. It's all old school like Sean Connery type stuff though, with a little bit of like gadget tech here and there, but it's all pretty old school looking, so we're not talking new James Bond. The writing on the other hand is pretty lighthearted. it's like witty, dry humor. It's honestly as entertaining as the gameplay in my opinion. It really helps the game not take itself too seriously. I wish we could afford real plants, but our dry martini budget is disproportionate to, well, everything else. The gameplay is really engaging and fun despite being a seated only VR experience. I would really like a game just like this with the ability to move around, have a bigger play area to mess around with, um, but again, seated only makes it really accessible, so that's always a good option. To counteract the fact that it's seated only, there's some throwaway explanation to why you have telekinesis, uh, but that's more than most VR games give us, honestly. Telekinesis is pretty much required for a VR game at this point. 
It's really just important to have when working with a large environment when we have to stay stationary. Now this ability is pretty much the most important thing you can do in the game, so this is going to be my opportunity to voice my one complaint. The telekinesis can be a little difficult to manage at times, at least that's been my experience. I'm playing the game on a Valve Index, and the first time I played it, I actually played it before they had official Index support, so I was playing with Index controllers with Vive Wand mappings. This meant that I had to use the little touchpad to use the telekinesis because that's what you had to do on the Vive Wands, was use those god-awful giant touchpads to bring things in or move things out with the telekinesis. And that was just a pain because that little touch strip is it's just not very good. It's not easy to use. I'm not a huge fan of it, to be <laughs> completely honest with you. Um, but that's why it was a little hard for me at first. Now, however, the game does have official index support. So the telekinesis is actually used with the joysticks, which is, I think, how it works on other platforms that don't have any touch options. Like if I were to play this on an Oculus, for example, it would pretty much have to be on the joysticks because there's no touchpad, the joystick is the only option. However, even though it is better using the joystick over the touch strip, there is some issues with the telekinesis with how you actually grip things. This game falls victim to something that a lot of new games are falling victim to with these new index controllers. Basically, you can grip using the finger sensing grip of the index controller, but you can also grip with the trigger. It's honestly very unclear, and this game specifically what I believe I experienced most recently was that you can use the grip sensing part on things that are close to you that you can actually grab, but with telekinesis you have to use the trigger, which is confusing because when you bring it in, you have to use the grip to hold it once it's close, and then you use the trigger to use the object. Like if it's a lighter, you use the trigger to activate it. Like I said, a lot of games have been doing this, like they don't know which to use, They'll interchangeably use the trigger or the grip sensing on the index controllers for gripping objects. That ambiguity just makes things difficult to get used to and ultimately makes the controls kind of weird. But that is a very specific problem that's very specific to, well, me or anybody else that's playing on the index. So I'm sure that this mechanic works just fine on pretty much every other platform. A good thing that also helps with this problem is the very slow tutorialization at the beginning of the game. The game is really good at holding your hand and making sure you know how to play the game before actually throwing you in the levels. It gives you plenty of time to get used to it at your own pace, so it allowed me to get used to the weird hardware funkiness that I had to deal with. Overall, I Expect You to Die is a VR game that I feel comfortable recommending to pretty much anyone. I think it's fun and entertaining no matter what you're into. It's a game that no matter who you are, you can find something to like about it. It's $24.99 on Steam and I definitely think that it's worth full price. The only areas that this game really falls short is the length and the fact that it's seated only. Like I said before, options are always great. I would rather have more options, but if you only have to pick one, then at least the most accessible one is the one you picked. As far as the length, the game has four base levels and it already has three DLC levels. I checked, I was wrong. There's already three since it came out. For free, might I add. These are all DLC levels, but they're free. They just get added to the game, much like Pistol Whip that I keep talking about. So it's a game that you can buy and it's gonna keep giving to you. It's on pretty much every headset in existence, so if you're into VR, you should get I Expect You to Die. Hey, Dickie's Editor here with a quick update. On January 27th, which was after the original recording of this review, Shell Games announced the sequel to I Expect You to Die called I Expect You to Die 2, The Spy and the Liar. So, it seems that there aren't any more new levels coming out. The three DLC levels are already out and in the original game. This doesn't change anything. I still highly recommend the original, so you should check that one out and then get ready for this really good looking sequel. I'm going to show a little bit of the teaser trailer right now, but I'll leave a link in the description to watch the whole thing. Again, doesn't change anything. The original game totally rocks. Still recommend it. Okay, that's it. Back to the rest of the video. There's been an uptick in Zorax's activity. So, you've got a lot of work to do. We're counting on your skill and cunning. 
Whoa, it's been like three videos since I've done any VR content. What the heck is going on here? Regular video game content? Tech teardowns? Short films? Oh my. Don't worry, if you're here for VR game reviews or any other VR content, I've got quite a bit lined up. I did some experimenting with other content types over the holidays, and I'll continue to do so in the future, but VR gaming is going to be the heart of what I do here. If you have any opinions to share on I Expect You to Die, or if you have any suggestions on what I should cover next, please leave a comment down below. You know the drill, if you like the video, click the like button, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon right next to it so you get notified whenever I post a new video. Now that we're out of the holidays, I can hopefully improve my workflow and get a lot of stuff turning out. And I'm really pushing for us to get to a thousand subscribers, so if you could help us out with that, that would be amazing. This is obviously totally optional, but if you want to help support the channel, there's some links down below with which you can totally do that. Or just share this with a friend, that's a huge help as well. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Peace.